Sergeant, dismiss the man. Detail, dismiss! How many lost, Lieutenant? Twenty-two of them, three of us. The war between the states, that bloody war, is ended. But here in the West, another war rages. From Montana to Arizona, men named Carpenter and Crook and Custer fight men called Red Cloud and Spotted Tail, Crazy Horse and Geronimo. It's a war of unparalleled horror and tragedy and savagery, of horrors beyond recounting. And yet, in the opinion of many, its most terrifying instant occurred not on the plains, but here, in the comparative safety of Fort Union, New Mexico. And not during a battle, but during a dance. And not to a soldier, but to a girl. I wonder if this is in the regulations. Well, we better check and find out, sir. Oh, by all means, first thing tomorrow. To the devil with the Apaches. So, where'd you run across them this time? North of Las Cruces. 40, 45 Braves. Las Cruces, Doñana, Tortugas. I wonder what's going on down there. Well, as a guess, I'd say Eskimensen's mounting an attack. Guesses won't feed the Bulldogs. We'll have to know. I know that, sir. I think maybe you better have another drink. Medicinal purposes. Combat's fatigue. Thank you, sir. Eustace? I think we can let this report go for a little while. You've been through enough. You go on back to quarters. Well, I... Uh, Surely you'd like a rest. Well, yes, sir, but I was... Well, sorry. Judas Priest, Lieutenant, you'll want to clean up a little bit before you see her anyway. You'll have plenty of time. She's at the settler's store. They just brought in a new shipment of eastern silk. And if I know my daughter and my wife, they'll be there half the day. Now, go on. Yes, sir. Oh, sorry. Oh, no, no. Come in, Buchanan. Come in. Uh, Eustace, this is one of the new officer replacements. Lieutenant Fairchild, Lieutenant Henry Buchanan. I'm honored, Lieutenant. The honor's mine, Lieutenant. Colonel? Buchanan, you're uh, new in this territory. Come over here, I want to show you why we're worried. So that's fair, child. Hmm? Nothing, sir. Nothing. Well, Bernice, what do you think? I don't know about the color. Now, Henry, if you must my hair. Henry! Eustace, when did you get back? About a half an hour ago. And it took you half an hour to come and see me? Well, I don't think that's very flattering. Who's Henry? You jealous? Of everybody who looks at you. Everything you brush up against. Who's Henry? You're gonna feel awfully foolish. Major Tibbs, little boy. Oh, I see. Little Henry Tibbs, huh? The boy with the long, long arms. I thought he was standing on a stool. You know my stepmother. Of course I do. How are you, ma'am? Hello. Were there any casualties, Lieutenant? Yes, ma'am. There were three. Oh, I'm so sorry. How awful. I was just about to ask. I... Excuse me, I must buy some salt. Well, she needn't have looked so pious. I really was going to ask. Did you ask me? Of course. Now tell me seriously, what do you think of this? Sometimes, Lily, I... Sometimes you what? Sometimes I forget how lovely you really are. Listen, when are we going to announce the engagement? Soon. Is this going to be for the new dress for the ball, Saturday? Well, I don't know. I haven't made up my mind yet. 
Listen, let's announce it then. Before the first waltz. We'll see. Hey, do you remember this? Lum, bum, bum, bum. Yes, of course I remember. <sighs> Lily, I thought about you so often out there. Were any of those poor men married? Mm -hmm. Two. Don't you usually have a little something to say to the wives? Yeah, but it's not a task I jump at doing. Still, I suppose you're right. It does have to be done. Perhaps I'll see you tonight? Yes. Yes, of course. Mrs. Clark? Good day, Lieutenant. That is a very nice young man. Oh, to me, he seems an exceedingly drab one. Alongside Lieutenant Buchanan, you mean? He asked me to the ball. Which he? Both. And so you accepted both. You have a very popular stepdaughter. I have a very unique stepdaughter. She's the only unmarried girl on the post. Do you know, Bernice, sometimes you sound like those wicked stepmothers in books. The ones who are always so jealous of their husband's children. If you've finished with Lieutenant Fairchild, why can't you have the kindness to tell him so? He's terribly in love with you. Lily, do you hear me? He's terribly in love with you. Oh, fiddlesticks. Besides, who says I'm through with him? A girl ought to have as many bows as possible. At least that's what Papa tells me. Is that why you've thrown yourself so shamelessly at Lieutenant Buchanan? Ooh, step mama, you do sound jealous, and you're a married woman. That's a cheap and silly thing to say to me. Is it? You're a vain, cruel girl. And I pity you the growing up you'll have to do. Well, you just save your pity for someone who needs it, Bernice. Whether you know it or not, Lily, you need it. And what do you intend to do Saturday night when two escorts show up? There won't be two. Papa? Hmm? Where's Las Cruces? South. Now west. Oh, so that's where all the new trouble is. Someone was saying you were going to have to send out a new patrol. Somebody's got big ears. Papa, mm? promise me something. Mm? Don't let Eustace go. Eustace? He wants to, he told me. Rubbish, he was just out. That's what I said. I asked him why Lieutenant Buchanan couldn't take his regular patrol, and he said he could. But he didn't feel he knew the territory or the enemy as well as he did. He seemed to think this would be a very important patrol. That could be. Matter of fact, I don't much like waiting even until tomorrow. Eustace said it might be dangerous to send a boy out to do a man's job. He wanted to volunteer, but I wouldn't let him. It might be much wiser for you, Missy, to leave the military affairs of this fort to the Army. Papa, if you change your mind and let Eustace go, I'll die. If you died as often as you threatened to, Lily, I couldn't afford the funeral bills. Oh, Papa. Now, scare. Uh. Miss Lily, I admire you so very much. I admire your sense, your soul, and... Good evening. Why, Lieutenant Fairchild, how nice to see you. You're acquainted with Lieutenant Buchanan, I believe? We've met. Well, it's getting late, Miss Lily, and I have an early patrol tomorrow morning. Wrong. I have the patrol, and it's tonight. You have it. You heard me. But my name was posted. The Colonel changed his mind. If he did, Lieutenant, I'm certain he had a good reason. Well, let's say that the Colonel had a very pretty reason. Hmm? I think I'd better look into this. Miss Lily? My, how little Henry Tibbs has grown up. May I remind you, Eustace, that you are not my lord and master yet. And the way I feel now, you may never be. That's all right, Lily. 
Because I feel the same way. You see, I just stopped by to tell you that uh, your little plan had worked. I hope you and little Henry have a pleasant time Saturday. Good night, ma'am. Eustace. You just don't understand me at all, do you? I'm late, Lily. The men are going to be waiting for me. Apparently, Papa told you about my going to see him. Did he also tell you the promise I made him give? What promise? Papa's always said he'd never allow me to marry a lieutenant. Now, what does that suggest to you? Especially if you make a good record in the patrol. Captain's boys. Huh? Lily, are you telling me the truth? Make a good record, Eustace. <laughs> they say the French and English knights used to go into battle with their ladies' handkerchiefs against their hearts. Am I your lady, Eustace? You're my world. Come back soon. I'd come back from hell to be with you. knock. What are you doing up? What time is it? Almost four. Lily. What's the matter, Bernice? Why do you look like that? I... Bernice, what's the matter? They called your papa over to the headquarters building. The patrol. Lily! We know they're not Eskimensons, Braves. That's one thing. That's one. Another one is it's cost me 18 men to learn I'm in no danger of attack. Papa? Lily, what are you doing here? Get on home. Bernice, take the girl home. Oh, come on, What Lily? happened? Colonel! Henry, what happened? There was an ambush, Lily. Where's Eustace? Lily, he didn't come back. Of course he came back. He just spoke to me. Where's Lieutenant Fairchild? He's dead, miss. Why do you all lie to me? Why are you lying to me? Miss Lily, he died in my arms. When? Three hours ago. Maybe four. This is what I meant by growing up, Lily. Let me take you back to the house. Leave me alone, I'm all right. I don't need anybody's help. Good afternoon, Miss Lily. Good afternoon, Lieutenant. May I sit down? Of course. It's very warm. For March. Very.
Miss Lily, I want to express my sympathy. What you meant to Lieutenant Fairchild. And how much he meant to you. I spoke to the Colonel about the ball. I suggested cancelling it in view of everything that's happened. But he seems to feel that everything should continue as scheduled. Matter of morale. Naturally, you won't want to come. Why not? Well, I simply assumed. You assume too much. Everyone assumes too much. Lieutenant Fairchild and I were very good friends, nothing more. What am I supposed to do, throw myself on a burning gap like some Hindu priestess? It was a dreadful thing to have happened, but it was not my fault. Nobody thinks it was your fault, Billy. I don't want to be alone, especially Saturday night. Take me to the ball. Dance with me for hours and hours. I will. I need someone to love me. I love you, Lily. You're my world. How did you do that? Do what? Why did you imitate him that way? Imitate who? Don't you tell me you didn't. I just heard you. I swear. Henry, you go back to your barracks. You get away from me. Lieutenant Gage. My cards are all filled up, but maybe we could sit one out later. Thank you, Lieutenant. Lily, I'm going to hate to lose you to anybody. Uh -huh. Excuse me. How do you feel? Oh, wonderful. Especially since I met Lieutenant Gage. What about Lieutenant Buchanan? I saw him by the punch bowl. He said you'd promised to marry him. Really? How odd. Oh, Lily. Oh, now, really, Bernice, if that shocked expression froze on your face, wouldn't you look a sight? You haven't learned a thing. Oh, yes, I have. I've learned not to take life so seriously. You know, that's something you should learn. Excuse me, Colonel. Yes, sir. Lily, our waltz.
March the 30th, 1869, in the Sutler store at Fort Union, New Mexico, a young girl died. Now, there is no doubt about that. The disagreement centers around how she died. Some of the witnesses say that Lily Clark danced alone that night. Some of them say that she danced with a man they didn't recognize. The rest maintain that her partner was E.R. Fairchild, Lieutenant, U.S. Cavalry, deceased. Impossible? Of course it is. I mean, one of the few certain facts in this often absurd and very uncertain world is the fact that there can be no such thing as a ghost. Or can there? <laughs>